and get back to work now. So Officer Vatcher just pulled over a vehicle that was going well above the speed limit. He had it on radar at 58 miles per hour in a 40 zone. Turns out the driver is only 17 years old, so that means he's still on his junior operator's license. So if he was issued a ticket for this offense, that would result in an automatic 90-day license suspension, even for that single speeding ticket. Luckily for him, Officer Vatcher decided to cut him a break and let him off with just a warning. But he's out right now issuing some stern words of advice to this young driver, and he's going to let him on his way. As we're heading southbound down Main Street, Officer Orr spots a vehicle that has its high beams on as it passes him. He then flips around and initiates a traffic stop. This is one of my pet peeves, fair to dim high beams. Eight seven running. Avon just in from Maine with one. It's a gray Honda Accord with one. Avon If you notice here, Officer Orr touches the back of the vehicle near the taillight. This practice originated with state troopers who used to patrol lonely stretches of rural highway alone and backup really wasn't within distance. They started doing this in case the vehicle tries to drive away or, God forbid, the driver tries to hurt the officer. Once other officers found that vehicle, they can test to see if that officer's fingerprints were on it, and if they were, that was confirmation that that was the vehicle in question. Um, it isn't as common nowadays for officers to do this with all the data recording systems and databases and cameras around, but some still do this out of tradition, and it still serves a purpose. How are you doing, sir? Good, thank you. Good. Do you have a license registration? So the reason I stopped you, mm -hmm. all right, you have your high beams on. It was very difficult to oh. see when you were passing me. <laughs> okay. So there's a law called failure to, uh, failure, failure to dim high yeah, beams. I was on the uh, that uh, over there when okay. I was coming. That's why I put it on. But I forgot to turn it on. I see you're almost home. Okay. I think over here. No, you're the. I think that's what my computer said. So like I said, it's very to dim high beams, um, and it's just, just very difficult to see. So I'm just going to check out your license, make sure this, everything matches oh, up. Yeah. Most of you are going to want to be out of here in a few minutes, okay? money fines yeah. if somebody lies to me is very argumentative then I will give them a, a money fine or if I notice in their driving history that they've been warned multiple times mm -hmm. or stopped multiple times for the same offense yeah but with this gentleman he literally looked down at his dash saw that the blue light was on for his high beams and laughed because he didn't even realize that he had his high beams on yeah. So for him, it was an honest mistake, so I'm not going to give somebody a, a, a money fine for an honest yeah. mistake. So 
You're opening up your rule book? Yeah, I just don't know uh, the statute number off the top of my head. Well, I guess when uh, we talk about officers who are by the book, you are literally. I guess I am. <laughs> Fair to dim high beams. Does it say like the recommended fine if you do? Yes, yeah, so it has a, a. We don't get to choose how much a fine is. It, um, the fine is set by statute. And it's set by these numbers that we have to write down. So this is a. It's called a CMR law. So generally, those have to be written on a state highway, which Main Street is. So here's your license registration, just like I promised. All right, failure to dim high beams, no money fine, checked off as a warning. This doesn't affect your license, registration, or insurance. It simply just documents the stop. Okay? Drive safe. Have a good night. I think your GoPro is dead. Yeah. It said it had four hours on it. The red light wasn't on. Eight seven, ready. Clear stop. Okay. 